Hey YouTube, welcome to another video, and as you see, I'm outside of an HP computer, but this is actually the computer that I showed you in another video. Uh, this is going to be a 2 in 1 video, I'm going to be showing you this one, then I'm going to be showing you something I did with my Commodore 64, which is back up on my desk, like usual. So let's get started, just going to open this up. So, it pulls off, it's a beefy, so, here is my computer. So, I currently have an Intel stack cooler on there. Oh, I didn't even notice the phone makes it look like there are keys on there. That's pretty cool. Next, first thing I have a power supply. It is a 300 watt power supply, which isn't very good for today's standards. So, max output power, 300 watts which is not very good compared to what people uh, do today. Uh, I have a CDR drive right here, or a CDRW drive. Actually, it's one of the light scribes, so if you flip it over, if you have the correct drivers, you can actually uh, use the laser to burn uh, picture things into the, uh, whatchamacallit, disc. Uh, if you get behind these wires and look in there, there's a rinkety mounted uh, floppy drive. It's a USB floppy drive. That's why there's a, an actual good cable going out and through the uh, open hole in the back. Make sure it's not going to panel. If we come around to the front and open it up, you see there's the opening to the drive right there. I have a Firewire port, two USB 2.0 ports. I have a uh, Compact Flash 1 and 2, Smart Media slash whatever that is, MMC and SD, M Memory Stick Pro, two uh, USB 2.0, uh, one USB 2.0 socket. Um, my Intel stock cooler, I do have a thermal compound. You're probably going to judge me for it, but it's uh, the baby butt paste because it's the best thing I have. Uh, Here's my hard drive, which just sits on the bottom. It is, it's 80 gigabytes using SATA and uh, 7.2 thousand RPM. Um, this uses your everyday SATA and sits on the bottom of my computer right there. And you guys might be saying, oh, why don't you get a better computer? I can't afford it. Uh, right there on the board you see a jumper, which isn't relevant, so yeah, my Intel stack cooler right there. Uh, I have a Pentium CPU in there, which is extremely outdated, apparently, I didn't know, but I have another one that I'm planning to put in there, if I can figure out how. Uh, back here, I have a PS2 mouse and keyboard, which is why I got the motherboard I did, because... It actually supports PS2 mice and keyboards. Uh, I have a serial port, parallel port, VGA. That's my video because I don't have a graphics card. I have four USB ports, an Ethernet port, and uh, six different audio in or out, depending on what I'm using. So I'm just going to plug those guys back in there. And if you want to see this PC in action, go check out, I believe it's my latest video. I don't know. I forget now, because those are things I don't document in my brain. Well, on to the second thing now. Oh, that's a mess. So, I have my Commodore 64. What I have right here is one of those little TVs of the 80s. And, uh, me pointing out the Commodore 64 in this may indicate what's going to be happening. So, uh, found the channel. Right there. And you see the screen lights up. Uh, I don't know what happened. My audio randomly cut out. So I'm just going to explain this with the voiceover. So I hooked up my Commodore 64 to this little television thingy. And uh, I'm going to show you that it actually is hooked up if you can see the cursor moving. Well, I'm going to put in this floppy disk right here, which is very shiny. If I can... Uh, open up the drive properly, turn it on, uh, in 
didn't correctly remove the disc and throw it in there. I'm in a bit of a rush. Restart the Commodore 64s, not to damage anything. Uh, banging on the keyboard load commands, which don't work the first time because I failed miserably at uh, getting them to work the first time. Let's try again. And I think it's found it. Let's see, has it found it yet or not? Come on, one. I must do something wrong. Uh, I'm gonna have to set down the phone quickly while I do this. Okay, flash is now off. I probably don't have to cut anything. Let's see, it's the EA logo. Or the Electronic Arts logo, I don't know. Are there are three, not just EA. Uh, I don't know. Right, if I bring my microphone close, you might be able to hear the drive clicking away. Oh, I saw something there. Ooh. The Dynamax production. Now, I don't get audio through this. It doesn't uh, like to give me audio for some reason. So this guy's going to say a few things. Project Firestar. Uh, the controller. Uh, to figure out which one of those makes I have two. There we are. Yeah. Uh, now I'm inserting disk one. And button. Oh. Okay, now you see uh my little guy is in the bottom right there. And you see uh he moves back and forth with the joystick. Uh let's see if I can adjust the brightness. Make it look better. Doesn't seem like that wants to. There's a brightness knob on here, which you can see does almost the exact. Actually, if I oversaturate on the screen a bit, on the screen looks good. I haven't played this game much, but what I've noticed is, uh, makes something. Oh, as you see there, the uh, screen is actually wobbly a bit. That just happened. Danger. Okay, I don't want to look at that. As you can see, this does work. And it works pretty nicely. It does get wobbly sometimes, but it works pretty nicely most time. See you later. Bye!